picked up a used camera yesterday. Uh, this is a Zeiss Icon Contessa LKE, or possibly LK. Uh, I picked it up off of Craigslist from a gentleman who had had it new, and there was a problem. The lever wasn't advancing. Now I got that fixed, but the problem wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So this video, I'm going to do a little breakdown of what I had to do to actually fix this and what became unfixed along the way. And I think this is very, it's useful, um, mainly because searching for any sort of video on how to fix a Zeiss Icon Contessa. I couldn't find anything. Um, also, it came with the original case, which is in really good condition. Uh, but the camera itself, I mean, it's it was flawless. Um, it says here at the top, Contessa LKE. Um, it is using a Zeiss Tessar lens with a Protor, sorry, Prontor 500 LK uh, shutter mechanism. And not a lot on this camera online. So uh, going through and trying to figure out how to repair it, how to get the shutter to work, had some issues. So um, let's get to some of the videos of how this is taken apart and how you can try to repair it. So once we get the Contessa LKE out of its case, uh, we can really appreciate the kind of smooth style that it has. It's got a uh, light sensor right here, it's got the viewfinder, it's got the focal rangefinder window right here, and well, it's, it's all pretty slick. Um, for operation, there's plenty of other videos out there. Um, plenty, sorry, there's like one, but it's a pretty good video running through the operation of it. But quick run through, got the lever for the advance right here. Click the shutter release there. Uh, on the top, we have a light meter uh, indicator between the two red arrows. So right now it's reading a little underexposed. So if I were to increase the shutter speed, it starts to go up. If I increase it too much, it goes too high. If I, um, well, I already have the aperture wide open, but if I close the aperture, it starts to decrease. So you can do a little from the hip shooting here. Uh, this lever hides the uh, sink for the flash and it's got a cold shoe on the top. Um, kind of a cool thing right here on the top is the indicator for how many shots you have left. So right now it's reading five. If I advance, it goes to four. Um, it automatically clicks one at a time. Now, this doesn't reset on its own, so whenever you get a new roll of film in, you have to move the ring around to however many shots you have left. So if you're running a roll, well, I put on 35, but you get the point. Um, on the front here, um, as I mentioned before, it's got a Prontor 500LK um, shutter, which is kind of important because there aren't that many of them out there. And it's really hard to find instructions on them. And it's got the uh, Zeiss Tessar uh, lens, which is supposed to be pretty good. Haven't run film through it yet. Um, on the inside, if we crank it open, you can see it's a pretty standard 35 millimeter camera. If I advance, you can see the film winding mechanism working. You can see the lens opening and closing there. If I want to release the film, if I'm done and I want to roll back up, I just click this little button. A lever pops out. Gotta make sure it's released all the way. And then you can roll like so to wind your film back up. When you're done, you just plop that back in there and stores out of the way. Pretty cool. Um, so how did I get this thing apart to get it fixing? When I first bought it, it wouldn't go past there. It was very, very stiff. So first idea was something in here in the uh, advancing mechanism, the caulking mechanism is causing a problem. So there's just two screws on either side. Figured, why not take those apart? Now, it turned out it was was not in this. It was inside the shutter. The shutter was jammed, and the problems lay in there, and that's later parts of the video. But taking off this cover actually unveils what's going on inside. So let's go ahead and take that off real quick. 
There's nothing spring-loaded in here, so taking the screw off is not going to cause any sort of catastrophic failures. Just make sure you keep those little screws. I always enjoy seeing screws that are have a head that's the same diameter as the length of the screw. Just teeny tiny little pancake screws. So with those two screws removed, you can lift off the top. Now mine has a bit of a break. This red wire right here attaches to the uh, connection, the sink for the flash, and it's just there. It's this teensy tiny little wire and it snapped. But I have no plans on using a flash on this anytime soon, so I can always resolder that later. Um, once you got this open, you can see the winding mechanism. You can see some of the connections uh, for the light sensor right here. Light sensor is connected. You can see that the there's a needle, and if you cover up the light sensor, it rotates uh, right here. The light sensor is essentially a little solar panel. It's creating a small voltage and that is going through a system, I assume, with some variable resistors right here, and a little closed loop circuit, and that adjusts, um, I assume, again, that this moves until it's at a position where the resistance is just right, and it kind of balances itself out. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any sort of magnet or anything in there or not, but the interesting part is that this little needle that you're seeing, it's under a plastic cover, that has a piece that drops down and that's what gives you your viewfinder light meter reading. So it's all one piece, it's not two different pieces. Uh, but to see what else is going on here, we gotta take off this protective metal plate. I wanna see how the focal, I'm sorry, the focus of the device is worked out. So this is just a little metal plate to help block out light. And once we get inside there, we have a pretty interesting little mechanism. Uh, the light that comes in through the viewfinder passes through uh, this diagonal piece of glass and out through what you look at. But in front of it, you can make out there, there's just a little teeny mini lens right there. Just a little teeny chunk of glass. And that little chunk of glass is allowing you to see your shutter speed and your aperture readings, aperture reading, excuse me. And that pops up in your viewfinder. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. I don't know if I can get it right here. Not gonna focus right, but that little square of glass is actually allowing you to read this through the viewfinder. You can always read it from the top, of course, as well as the light meter, but allows you to view it through the viewfinder. So light's gonna pass in here. Some of it's gonna reflect off of this glass, bounce onto your light meter, reflect back off, and then uh, you're gonna end up being able to see through some clever trickery. Um, there's also, uh, it's gonna go through and then you're gonna be able to view it uh, through here. Now, that's your um, light meter. The rangefinder mechanism, in order to figure out whether you're in focus or not, uh, light's gonna pass through this window, which you can tell has just a cutout to let certain amount of light in. And it's going to reflect off of here, and it's gonna pass through this little block lens. And if I adjust the focal ring, you should be able to see that block moving. It's right there in the middle of the, the frame. As I move from infinity to three and a half meters, that shifts. So there's a little bar connected to that uh, lens that goes through into the lens housing, connected to a spring. And then as you change the focal ring, it pushes a pin in and out against the spring. And as it pushes against the spring, it pushes against a lever, which shifts this thing forward or backward. And that allows you to see your uh, viewfinder image and the rangefinder image, and they sync together 
as this little piece of glass moves back and forth. Pretty cool. Um, pretty simple mechanical system. Um, not much else to show inside of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and uh, well, actually might as well show right now. Um, how do you get the lens off? Well, if you just want to mess around with the lens, you can take the focal ring off. The screws for it are in the adjuster grips. And uh, then you can access just the lens uh, in the front. And I haven't done it, but you, I'm pretty sure you can unscrew it and take it off and get access to the front side of the shutter mechanism. I didn't do that. I actually took off this whole housing and got to it from the back side, which was a pain in the butt. But let's go ahead and see what you would do in order to do that if you really, really needed to. If you open up the back of the camera, inside you should be able to see two screws on the film canister side. And there are two screws on the film winding side. These are a little harder to get to, but if you remove those, this whole front housing, which is a chromed metal. It almost looks like plastic. It looks like chrome plastic, but it is a chromed metal around a plastic housing, but this whole thing will pull out and the focal lever, you actually have to push down and unclip it and you can remove this whole mechanism. Uh, it comes out separately. Then there's some retaining rings and things like that. You can separate the whole uh, shutter mechanism and lens from the housing which I've got some video of as well. But that's a kind of quick overview of how the Zeiss Icon Contessa LKE works. Uh, from a quick mechanical point of view, what follows from here is gonna be me slaving away trying to figure out how the heck do you get this lens fixed. And uh, some of it's missing because I got frustrated and stopped recording video. But uh, for the most part, there's some good stuff in there and uh, I'll put those in.